So for some of the final thoughts, obviously rely on us to really help you with the radiator package uh, for your specific vehicle and the choice. And then I just wanted to give you some briefing on how we wire it just as an example here. And then you'll get a little uh, screenshot of the, the diagram that comes with your engine package uh, in all of the details we send you. So the way we wire it is a little different than most people's directions. And I guess I should have done this color coded, but obviously we've got our battery up here and we have battery power that would be coming to our relays, okay? So our relays on a dual fan system, there's gonna be two of them obviously. There's a constant, uh, or sorry, there's your constant power that would go through to the fans, all right? Whenever the relay's activated. Most companies, on the switch side of the relay are going to tell you to go to uh, key on power. The problem with doing key on power is as soon as we turn the key off, the fans shut off. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if you look at a lot of new vehicles, the ECU controls those fans and pulse width modulates them to slowly ramp them down so we can avoid heat soak. This is in everyday cars like Hondas and BMWs and whatever. These, and those engines typically aren't making the kind of heat that we're making with our older school muscle cars. So, obviously, what you can see, we're taking our power coming into the relay that's going to power the fan, and we jumper it, and we bring it over to the switch side. So, I call it that this relay is live all the time. The only thing that's going to turn or switch that relay on is basically this ground side is going to our coolant temperature switch which is located in the radiator. So as soon as the radiator comes to temperature, it's going to close that uh, circuit and provide power to the fans. You see that we've got the fans tied together going to ground. And you'll notice another ground over here. Because the temp sensor is a ground switch and it's located in the radiator, depending on how the radiator's mounted, you may want to add just a separate little ground strap off of the radiator shroud to make sure that that sensor is actually grounded. So that's kind of what that extra one is. So a couple of extra little things to think about that people normally don't look at is going to be the trinary switch for the AC. That obviously, if the engine's cold and we just fired it up but it's a hot day and we kick our AC on, we need the fans to turn on so the AC cools correctly. So we can get the air running through the condenser. So we use a trinary switch and obviously, this trinary switch is going to provide the ground signal when the AC control comes on, okay? Now, I think I've located this a little bit incorrectly. I didn't pay any attention. But when we turn the AC control on, it's going to say, okay, go ahead. Once the pressure comes up in the, in the trinary switch, there's uh, pressures already preset in there. It gets to a certain pressure. It'll provide ground which would actually turn the fans on, even though the engine's not to operating temperature. And then you'll see we've got another ground. So some people want to be able to manually control their fans. Lots of race cars want to do that. That's fine, but if you forget to turn on the switch, then we've got an engine that overheats. So usually we're going to use that coolant temp switch in the radiator because if they forget to override it or turn the fan on, it's going to turn on automatically. But over here, it's just a switch to ground. So running a ground wire inside the car to a switch and the other side is grounded, as you see here, this will give you full control. Maybe after the fans shut off, you're, I don't know, in the pits or at a car show and you just want to turn the fans on, we've got an optional ground override to turn them on. So this is for brush style fans. All right, last but not least, something that's pretty new to a lot of people is the brushless fans and how to control those. Now, you can control brushless fans through like a Holly ECU, which is pretty neat, but it becomes a little more cumbersome because you got to set up when does the fan speed up or slow down. And you can do it based on RPM, vehicle speed. There's a lot of things that's very, very cool. We've done that, but I will say all the systems we send to you, we're going to use this, what I call the smart sensor. So this smart sensor is in the radiator, okay? And it basically tells the fan when to speed up and slow down based on the temperature it sees. So 
We, in our diagram, there's a white wire. Obviously, it directly, it's a direct plug-in. It's going to go right to this sensor. Um, we have our fan power, which is our red here. <laughs> and then we've got some ex extra wires. So this black off the fan goes directly to chassis ground. The black, I didn't label it, but this one is black, uh, goes to, uh, this is the sensor to chassis ground. Uh, so there's two different grounds. You can tie them together, obviously. Uh, but they're both grounds. So what you have going on here is this smart sensor, once it sees temp and wants to turn the fan on, through this red wire is basically how it's going to send power to the fan. And you'll see we've got direct power off of this battery, right? So that's how it's getting its, its uh, power, and this part of the sensor needs power. This ground is actually the trigger to tell the fan, you know, to power it uh, through your, your 12 volt. So um, obviously, additionally, we have the trinary control switch in this system as well. So I'll try to keep from confusing you guys, but so from the AC uh, control, it's going to obviously tell the compressor to come on. Again, when this trinary switch reaches a certain pressure, it's got direct battery power coming in and this blue is normally what we would call an override if, if for the fans. They call it an override wire. We're using it on the other side of the trinary. And what happens once this uh, closes and that power comes through, it's sending the override to tell the fan to come on, and it comes on wide open. Okay, it's always it's at full speed, which is actually perfect when the AC is turned on. So that's what we're using the blue wire for. Now, this red wire normally coming out of this uh, sensor would go to key on power. It would not be tied in to the battery power going to the fan. The reason we do is because, again, we want the fan to run slightly after we key off power. And since we're grounded to chassis ground, that will happen. Once this sensor, because it's smart, Remember, it knows that basically when it gets down to 180 or 170, I'm not sure exactly what those numbers are, um, it will slowly ramp the fan down and it gets to a certain temperature, it just completely shuts it off. When we first did this, our concern was because it's all hooked to power and ground, we're not really sure what goes in, uh, on inside that sensor. Do we have a parasitic draw on the battery? That may be a concern somebody will have. We have checked it. There is no parasitic draw whatsoever. With inside this sensor, it completely shuts the circuit off. So that's the difference between the brushless and brush style fans. I feel like we understand those extremely well. Like anything, we do things slightly different. And again, there's reasons behind that uh, as far as like the wiring, um, obviously certain types of shrouds or certain types of fans that we recommend. So once again, as an engine builder that tailors their engine builds and the vehicle packages specifically for you, I really feel like you need to put that trust in us. We've been there, done that. I have spent tons of money on radiators and fans that didn't work. We call it here tuition. That cost us a lot of money to figure it out. So when we give you a recommendation, there is reason behind it, and we really do mean it.